Welcome back. Uh, okay, so Malcolm, it sounds like, like you mentioned, I think 2,000 products at the Light Cellar. Mm -hmm. um, lots going on down there. When you're looking to add additional food items to the stable, per se, right. I mean, where are you looking? Are you reading literature? I mean, how, how does this come about? Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, reading lots of books, uh, engaging in, you know, research about different cultures. Um, yeah, I just seem to be kind of on the, the cutting edge of, of the health food industry and the whole movement and where it's going and, yeah. and just tuning into that. Cool. And again, we got that really strict criteria just, just because it might be popular or hype. Yeah. Um, we've got to personally, you know, have a connection to it and experience of it before we bring it in into, our, into our store. And then we always choose that highest quality of it. Good for you. That's great. That's great. Now, yeah. Canadians in general, though, I mean, uh, with the advent of trade, I mean, trade, the world's getting smaller. Yeah. I mean, things are a lot more accessible than they were before, whether it be foods, emergent, doesn't really matter. The yeah. world's getting smaller. Are a lot of superfoods under the noses of Canadians that we just really didn't even realize yeah. for the longest time? Yeah, no, totally. And, and actually, one of the greatest examples is, uh, you know, people will pay money to eradicate this particular plant, and it's called the dandelion. Really? Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. For uh, you can do so much. I've read with a bit it. about this. Yeah, go yeah, ahead, please. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's great for the liver, for instance. So you can uh, dig up the root, and yeah. you know you can actually chop that up and roast it, or you can buy it already prepared that way. Wow. But uh, it makes like a coffee substitute. That's actually really good for your liver. No and way. Really good for you. So you, that's how you prepare dandelion. The root would be roasted. That's one of the ways. And then you can maybe serve it with a protein or, or whatnot? Well, you drink it as a tea, actually. Oh, I yeah. see. Oh, pardon me, as a coffee. Okay, Yeah, gotcha, like kind gotcha. of a coffee substitute. So there, there are yeah. coffee substitutes out there that are made of dandelion root. Anyway. How's it taste? Is it palatable? Yeah, it is, actually. It's not bad, huh? Yeah. Uh, the leaves themselves, if you get them really young, um, they're, they're more kind of tender. As they get older, they become a little bit more bitter. Okay. And then you can use the flowers as well. So the whole thing, the whole thing's edible, and we're paying so much money to, to try and eradicate them. When it's yeah. just a nice, beautiful little flower, that's, that's good for Pick you. Pick the flower and make some tea, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, so what are some of the, I mean, there's got to be a few, some of the misconceptions that you face in the health food industry. Right. I mean, anything off, is, it, is there one singular yeah. force? I mean, what's the biggest Actually, probably the, big, the biggest misconception is, um, and, and this is kind of where I've arrived, you yeah. know, I think where the whole industry is going, food and nutrition, is about listening to one's own body, mm. right? And, and not following trends. Um, yeah, that's really, probably very important. Sure. Yeah, yeah, really based around that personal experience. Because, I mean, you can read a book, you can read an article, you can see like an ad and someone's like promoing, you know, Dandy mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And if you consume it and it doesn't work for you or you get an adverse reaction, whatever it is, like, all good, just leave it to the side, you know? Mm -hmm. Or like mm -hmm. I did, I, you know, for 12 years, I followed like a really strict vegetarian diet because I had intellectually this idea that it was good for me, you know, da 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 da. Yeah. But in the end, like my body was like, no, this, this is what you need. And mm -hmm. I was able to tune in to actually what my body needed. Yeah, that's probably strong advice uh, for anybody. Moderation as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. even moderation, they say. Uh, okay, the light seller, this is, I was on the website, I was checking things out. You guys offer, this is cool. It's called Kitchen Therapy, which is, uh, right. I guess, one of your um, workshops. And what it, what it is, I guess, it explores neuroscience and its relationship to nutrition. Yeah. It's fascinating. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, one of our guest instructors, Orsha Magyar. Okay. So she owns a company called Neurotrition. And within our classes, we have a whole list of, you know, a whole spectrum of different things you can learn. Yeah. And yeah, really excited for this class, because here we have someone, you know, medically trained as a neuroscientist who, you know, went through her degree and was in that field and mm -hmm. then got into holistic nutrition. Mm -hmm. And she's really brought those two worlds together. So her business and that class is all about exploring, you know, food and nutrition uh, through the eyes of a neuroscientist and how to optimize one's health and brain and, yeah. Does she have, like, off the, are you aware off the cuff of any, you know, mental health foods, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things uh, that I'm aware of, and, and more science just keeps coming out more and more, is mm -hmm. this idea of the gut-brain connection, right? Yeah, of course, so, heard, yeah. you know, yeah, the health of your this. gut, actually, you know, not only is it your digestive system, not only is it your immune system, mm -hmm. but really uh, your mental and emotional state. Yeah, yeah, isn't that something, hey? Yeah. Um, you make chocolate. You make healthy chocolate. Oh, yeah. Uh, first off, I mean, that just makes my heart flutter thinking about it. Healthy yeah. chocolate. I think a lot of people get excited hearing those two words in tandem. Yeah. Uh, how is that possible? What are you doing there? Yeah, okay. So, turns out um, chocolate, or what's known as cacao, cacao right? that's, the, that's the nut or the seed that makes chocolate. Yeah. There's a saying that it's the most widely consumed nut in the world that no one ever eats. 
meaning we're always eating it in a candy bar form, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But if you actually study it, and again, science is coming out more and more all the time, the health benefits of chocolate. You might have heard, you know, piece of dark chocolate, dark chocolate a day, yeah. you know, sure. does X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we do is we try and go as close to the source as possible. You know, we, we select really high quality, like heirloom varieties of the cacao. Okay. And then we process it in a way that uh, maintains a lot of that good nutrition. Mm. And then, so not only do we have a fantastic chocolate, but we'll add superfoods and herbs to it. Okay, oh, I see. Then, it, be then yeah. it becomes a delivery system. Right? So if I showed up here and just like, you know, Kevin, you got to get healthy. You got to eat more dandelion greens and salads and this and that. I mean, you might be open or you may not I be open. I would not be receptive to that at all. <laughs> For sure. But chocolate. But yeah, if yeah. I said, hey, man, I've got some superfood chocolate, you know, this is going to change your world. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll be mm -hmm. on board. And where's the cacao coming from that you're using? What part of the world? Yeah, I really love uh, Ecuador for, oh, okay. for its uh, variety. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. it's kind of like coffee where you can find uh, different cacao beans from all around the world that have different flavor profiles, different nutrient contents. So, so you're building relationships across the globe. Yeah. At yeah. times, will you, will you travel to these sites as well? Or yeah, I've been, been to Ecuador several times. Is that right? Yeah, I visited the, the cacao. Yeah. That's cool. So this is a real personal endeavor for you then, it sounds like. It is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Um, sparkling soda. Sorry, I'm just kind of going down the list because it's all pretty right. interesting to me. Yeah. You guys uh, have, a, I guess, another workshop where you're making healthy sparkling soda. Yeah. So uh, first off, is vodka going to ruin the ride on this? Or? <laughs> Probably, right? you, you can always add that afterwards. Sure, sure. But yeah. how does that come about? So is this more of uh, the, the fermentation that we were talking about yeah. earlier? Yeah, so the sodas are created through a process of fermentation. So okay. what you do is you start with, again, those old recipes, like the old-fashioned root beer, the way it used to be made, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. ginger beer, the ginger ales, which were tonics, right? You would you would consume, you know, ginger, ginger soda uh, as a way to help improve digestion. Right. Or right. root beer is like a spring tonic, for instance. Spring tonic. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the, the root beer that we make has dandelion root in it. It has uh, chaga mushroom. It has burdock. It has, you know, you, you know 10 different, like, wow. botanical ingredients. Sure. So we make a tea from that. We naturally sweeten it. Yeah. And then we add these uh, bacteria and yeast cultures that ferment oh, it. Okay, of course. And then through them digesting that, then you get uh, a little bit of carbon dioxide in there, which naturally uh, yeah. sparkles it. Yeah, so. that's brilliant. Wow, that's, I've got to come down and try one of these. Yeah. Um, the buzzword that's kicking around lately, uh, urban foraging. Right. Or I guess just foraging yeah. in general. Um, my understanding essentially is you go out to a forest yeah. and you collect mushrooms, uh, maybe some spruce tips. Yeah. Uh, first off, what am I doing with spruce tips? Ah, okay. Spruce tips are a fantastic source of uh, vitamin C okay. and they can be turned into a tea. You can make a spruce tip beer. You can Oh, so a few things. Oh yeah, lots yeah. lots you can do with it. Can you yeah. eat them raw? Uh, you can. Yeah. Okay, it might be just, a bit of an acquired taste. Yeah, they've got a, a strong flavor, but yeah. right when they're young and just green right at those tips, mm -hmm, they're mm -hmm. quite delicious. So, is there areas in Calgary that people can actually go and forage and yield some decent results? Oh yeah, I can yeah. walk right out my door and there is food. Yeah. And you're in uh, Northwest mean, Calgary. Yeah, Silver exactly. Springs, I think you mentioned so you just got to know what you're looking for. Well, and what am I looking for? Like, I mean, there's, I can probably roll up on a, a few different varieties of, of mushroom, right. fungi. And, yeah. you know, I probably wouldn't touch them because I, I don't right. know what I'm doing. I mean, no, there's obviously exactly. a certain responsibility and a knowledge base that you have to have. Is that fair to say before yeah, you Yeah, it is. And, you know, what I really recommend and how we kind of guide people is, you know, start with one thing at a time, right? Okay. You know, even one thing per season. And, you know, that might even be developing a, an appreciation for, you know, dandelion in the spring. And then it's, okay. you know, chickweed in the summer. And then it's, you know, burdock in the fall or whatever Whatever's it is. plentiful, I suppose, right? Make it easier yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fungi, mushrooms, so right. there's a few different varieties locally, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. Real, real power punch superfood, no? Yeah, it really is. And, and actually, uh, earlier I forgot to mention, so that is the fourth food group. So oh, it's plants, okay. animals, bacteria, uh, and fungi. Okay. And fungi have been a source of food and medicine for you know, long, long, long time for as us as humans. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. They grow all around us, all the way from, you know, yeast in the air to mycelium in the soil to those you know fruiting bodies that we see popping up at certain times right right you're absolutely right you need to be uh careful it's don't go out there and start picking any old mushroom mm. but you can uh take some courses and just one thing at a time so you know there was a time that i had no idea right like what i could eat what i could find and yeah. there's at least a dozen varieties that now i can go out and confidently pick and harvest so what type of uh nutritional benefit are we going to receive from some of the, the yeah mushrooms right so mushrooms i mean they'll offer things like protein, 
uh, you can get from them. But a lot of the mushrooms, especially that I'm really into, are yeah. actually those medicinal mushrooms. Okay. So they've got what we call beta glucans, which are long chain sugars, and not that you're going to taste any of the the sweetness from them. Right. Uh, they're you know sweeter sugars or shorter chains. These are much longer chains, and they actually have medicinal compounds that help uh, our immune system. Cool. So cool. it's just phenomenal the uh, the field of of research that's happening in the world of mushrooms and, and yeah. how they can benefit us. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think so many people uh, have decided, you know what, um, I'm going to check out alternatives in yeah. this day and age? Because I've got my theories, but I'd love to hear you. Yeah, that. for sure. I, I believe we're in our modern age society, we're, we're living a bit of an experiment, actually. Mm -hmm. We're... Um, you know, when I became a vegetarian, for me, it was this black and white between animals versus plants. Mm -hmm. You know, like the animals were bad for your, your health, the environment, you know, so on, so on and so forth. Ethics, I guess, comes yeah, up for some people. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. And, and what I realized, that, that wasn't true, right? That was half the picture. Mm -hmm. And it's more about, you know, scale, right? So it's, it's the industrialization of our food system, mm -hmm. the wholesale outsourcing to corporations to, you know, grow and prepare our food. Yeah. We're, to be honest, they're really driven more by the bottom line. Profit, and, yeah. and that's shifting. There, there is this new kind of economy that uh, is developing that's taking more into consideration. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing the effects of, of such a thing. And people just want more of a connection back to their food. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's worked for, for thousands of years. And, and no doubt, we live in a technological age where we have a lot of benefit. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, from from those advances, but food is one where you just got to come back to basics. I think it's tough to argue with that. Yeah, is that sort of the consensus in, in Calgary? Like, is there a, like a health food, food pardon me, community, a sense of camaraderie that exists? Yeah, it's it's really growing and really building. Uh, you know, born and raised here in Calgary, and I, I like to say I've been leaving ever since I could. You know, mm -hmm. finished high school, leaving, yeah. but always coming back, visiting family. And one of the reasons I was leaving was while well, the grass was always greener elsewhere. I'm going to BC. I'm going to California. Whatever it was. Yeah. And then, you know, I kind of stopped and I was like, you know what, I really love Calgary, the family's here, yeah. and there's an opportunity to grow a community, and that, that's what we've and done. it's happening. And yeah, it's Fantastic. happening, so, yeah, it's, re it's really spreading. That's great. Malcolm, that's all, that's all the time we got. Thanks a lot. Yeah, for sure. I really appreciate it. Okay, right on. Folks, uh, that's all the time we have for this evening. As usual, you can get at us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, we're on Instagram as well. Don't be a stranger. Until next time, take care.